Like I would love to spend time in prison, Chris. <laughs> I've Again. actually spent time in prison. Yeah. Hello, I'm Chris Litterman and welcome to Sparks, a series by Interactive Workshops. In every episode, we discuss how to spark something in work and life, from how to spark sales, to how to spark skills, to how to spark your memory so that your colleagues remember to take their increasingly molding food out of the fridge. I mean, how many rotting pots of hummus does Dan need? You can spark it, Chris. If we you can spark that. If you can think it, you can spark it. We just need to do that episode. Yeah, and today's episode is on one of my favorite, favorite topics. It's a good one. Go! That's right. This week, we're talking <laughs> how to spark goals. Go! <laughs> don't, don't do it again. Okay. We'll have to edit it out. Um, Jonah, welcome to the show again. Oh, Chris. Great to have you back. It is. Here we are. My favorite thing. Here we are. You and how me. How did we get here? How, how did we get here with all our, our subscribers? Yeah. So many of those last, last um, the likes. We really appreciate the likes. Mars Bar's gone to Homeless Charity. Yeah. Got your box of cereal. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. Enjoying that. Who'd have Full known? of sugar now. Special K. <laughs> Full of sugar. Um, Jonah, how do you set goals? I, I, I'm absolute goal monster. Go, I, I, I'm actually not, I don't care about success. I do care. Did you get your goals? And I, th- I feel like goals are a commitment to yourself. And if you can set a goal and get it, then you, te- you, train, you, you train yourself that in your life, what you set out to do can be achieved and will be achieved. And the, the, therefore, the more you set and then achieve goals, the greater your confidence becomes. And then as a result of that, you can set bigger and more audacious goals and achieve them if you would like to, mm. or you can set less goals and achieve them. That's interesting. So you're distinguishing between being successful and being able to set and achieve goals. I think people would think of you as a successful person. Are you just someone who gets your goals? Yes. I don't care about being successful. Like I, 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 but I think it's just incredible to the empowerment and the feelings. Some people call it the feelings of... Some people call it the feelings of agency. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. The feelings of agency that you are the active agent in your own life. Mm. That if you have, if you have, if you live with those feelings of agency, I mean, it's superhero stuff. It is Batman. It is Wonder Woman. That you can do the things that you want to do. That is. That does sound exciting, doesn't it? It doesn't. It sound uh, you're even, suddenly a superhero. Yeah, you're a superhero in your own life. If mm. you if you can say. I know how to set and achieve my goals. Mm. You can become and do mm. not anything because it's because there's some things that you can't do, but almost literally almost anything. Mm. Almost quite a lot of things you can't do. <laughs> there's yeah. so many We're things I can't do. As long as you heroes. keep those goals to the very narrow set of things you're good at. Yeah. And uh, the thing, avoid the things you shouldn't do. <laughs> avoid the things you shouldn't do. Like I would love to spend time in prison, Chris. <laughs> I've Again. actually spent time in prison. Yeah. And I went to help in a prison. But I, w- I wanted to. Right. And I've always been fascinated by prison because prison is, you're robbed of your agency because of your naughty and very wrong actions. Mm. Maybe sometimes through in- injustice as mm. well. You're in, for whatever reason you're there. Really whether, limits your goals, doesn't but, it? No, but your agency is taken away. Mm. And that is the ultimate, that's the punishment that we as a society, our punishment on people who have committed social wrongs is to take away their agency. Mm. The reverse is that's the ultimate freedom. If you yeah, have agency, got that freedom. Yeah. you can do things. Mm. So that agency, it's like that, that ability to control our environment, control our, ourselves in a way. <sighs> control is, a, is to me a loaded word right. because we're not as in control of life as we think we are. Mm. So there's also the random... Mm. In fact, it, there's... So it's less a, than control. Some psychologists, some psychologists think that if we realised how un-in control of life we are, if we actually, if human beings realize that, we'd actually have a heart attack and die, because we are, we, we overestimate how much we're in control. But it is related, isn't it? That that if we have this feeling of control, that, or that's why I say agency. Actually, 
It's not control, mm. it's agency. Mm. So I can't mm. control what's happening, mm. but I've got agency. I can move towards my goals. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. It's really interesting. Mm. And are we talking, when we say goals, about something that's different to an objective, an assignment, a task? Is there a distinction to make? This is why I like goals over sort of success. Goals have generally got a, a specific nature to them. So we have a sales target, X, Y, Z million, by a certain date. That's a goal to me. Mm. Uh, but to be a famous YouTuber, that's a bit intangible. What, what exactly does famous mean? We could try and define it. But yeah. But if you had the number of likes Your definition might views, be different to mine. Yeah. yeah. So some people... So I think that the, the goal is going from what you're trying to achieve in the end. So if you're trying to be a famous YouTuber, you're, mm. you want status and or feelings of recognition or you want mm. some... But what are you trying to get to? Let's break it down a bit from that into something that's actually we can focus on in a time scale. And let's put our efforts into that intensively, see if we get it. Um, that's what Mr. Beast did, is put his effort into it. Yeah. And become very famous. Yeah, he's definitely very successful. I, d I don't know if he wanted to be successful. I, I, you have to ask him. No, we'd have to ask him. But, but he but definitely yeah. wanted to get a lot of likes and subscribes. Yeah. And views. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think that's because he, he understands how the system works as well. He understands the algorithm and... He's well, that's stepping back to how to achieve your goals. You've got to know the process to get there. Mm. And again, a lot of people who I work with who are successful pay a unhealthy attention to detail on the process. So let's say if I want to be financially, if I want financial freedom. If mm. I want to, that could be a goal. Yeah. yeah. If I want that, what do I really need to do? There are two broad strategies that both end up in the same place. Your in passive income is greater than your outgoings. Not your job income. Mm -hmm. but your passive income, mm -hmm. income that you don't have to work for is greater than your outgoings. Most people would like that by the time they retire. They have a date they would like to get to where they have a pension or income that means they don't have to work. And most people get that. Some people want financial freedom before that. There's two ways to do it. One is to work on how much you earn and the other is to reduce how much you spend. I mean, if you move back in with your parents and got you could probably get to financial freedom quite quickly, but you might not want to live with your parents. Mm, and then we might have some <laughs> conflicts. But a lot of people actually do move in with their parents after university, partly because it gives them freedom to choose what to do and how to spend their time. So, mm. yeah. Are there different types of goal? There are different types of goals, but the, the three types I've just described already. So one is an outcome goal. That's the thing you're trying to achieve. If it's the Olympics, that's your goal medal. The process goal, that is the steps that you need to follow to get somewhere. And then the third one they tend to use is the performance goal, which is how much effort you put into the thing. And so I use those three different types to work out, is it, have I got the outcome goal clear? Have I got the, the process steps? And have I got the goal to follow those? And have I, am I pushing? Not everyone likes to push. I like to push. Am I pushing mm. enough for the performance? And or even you, just hitting, you know, yeah. not even pushing, just hitting yeah. the mark. Are there milestones? Yeah. Are there trackers? Um, yeah. And sometimes, like so sometimes, for example, with my exercise life, sometimes I'm trying to look for a aerobic fitness level. But sometimes it's just how frequently did I work out this month? And my goal might be then to work out five times a week. Um, sometimes I, I find I'm popping on a little bit of weight. I need to re pay attention to what I eat. Then I might have a goal to not snack or not have, not, you know, I might say my goal is to eat two meals a day and that's it. And then surprisingly, my weight waistline goal is achieved yeah so mm. that, that's more a compliance so do i do i hit the do i actually do what i said i was going to do yeah because i just had a cream egg <laughs> so i failed on that. broke it broke it i love a cream egg though chris oh they're good aren't they yeah they're good so and good. it's the scarcity they're only out a certain yeah. time time of year you've got to get it in that window and like a real egg which you can have every day the cream yeah. egg oh much better mm. if you could only have if eggs or cream eggs existed one of them didn't. I would have eggs. You would have eggs. I, I love a healthy breakfast. But again, this took me ages to learn, which is... I think cream eggs. I, we, we actually, we could have a big falling out, but cereal for breakfast, Yeah. which I had for 35 years. But uh, eggy breakfast is... Oh, I do love an eggy breakfast. Yeah. I love breakfast in general. That's good. Cereal is just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> cereal, I think, should be bedtime snack. <laughs> oh, it's that as well. Is it that as well? Oh, yeah, 100%. Oh, cereal is for life, not just for breakfast. Your house. Yeah, do it. Um... Why do we need goals? Can't we just get on with the kind of things that we've got to do? Well, of course we can. But should uh, we? Lots of people do. Mm. 
I don't think we should should have goals if you want if you want them. I, I know my mum doesn't. I don't think my mum has goals. I don't think my mum has goals. Yeah, my mum is brilliant. She's one of the best people I know. She's very fulfilled. She lives a great life. She helps a lot of people. She's professionally brilliant. If I said to mum, "What's your goal?" Oh, darling. I don't really have goals. I think you're right. A lot of people will say that. I don't really have goals. Do you have goals? I do have goals, yeah. 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 I think people at work probably need goals to some extent. I rely on them, I think. I, Without them, I've got these ideas of what I want to do. And like you say, you'd have the agency to do them, but I I don't get on with them. So how, do you, how do you shape an idea from like something I should do or it's out mm. there? How do you turn it into a goal for you? I think finding a way, and there's all sorts of goal setting frameworks out there, but finding a way of making it inspiring and also achievable, trackable, something you can say, I've done it or I haven't. Mm. Um, and like you say, having that that outcome goal and then below that, some of the process steps. goals, the steps, how am I going to know whether I've achieved it? So like your YouTube example, if my goal is to become a famous YouTuber, what do I need to track to know if I've achieved that. Mm. So for me, that might look like a number of subscribers or something, if that was my goal. It's not. Yeah. But, or it might also look like a number of likes, or it might also look like a number of videos. Yeah. And, and then I can start to track it, and I can say, well, I'm going to put a number on it, yeah. and I'm going to get there. And I think that process of trying to track something and, and know when you've achieved it is how to get there. What level... What proportion of your success do you think is driven from going through that process on the things that you're trying to achieve? Probably 80%. Or 80%. More. 80% yeah. of yeah. your success is through setting goals. I think so. And going through the process. What, where does the other 20% come from? Just from magic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My name's just, Chris. Just from, just from doing life. You know, the, the other bit of life that's on autopilot. That's or cruising, yeah, yeah cruising, things done. being me. I think I had a goal last year that was to spend 1.5 months in the United States <laughs> over the course of the year. How many months did I spend in the United States last year? Two. Yeah. <laughs> so you hear that? I hear that. Yeah. With a little bit extra. Yeah, but if the goal was to start a business in America, mm. have you? would you have hit that? Hard to quantify. Hard to quantify. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. but I think I don't think coming back to your question, I don't think you need goals. I I think what you're saying also is they they do provide. They're actually a, a navigational aid to mm, life. Mm. If I look back on each year, did I hit my goals last year? Start America and start a new office in the UK. So those were two of my big goals. Right, hit them. I know I hit them. If someone says, "How did last year go?" and on our revenue target, how did last year go? I can, it went really well. Mm. How do you know? Mm. Because I hit all my goals. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that, that goal was a metric underneath that wider goal of starting our company out in yeah. New York, but that was the trackable bit. Actually, if I spend a couple of months there, that's part, part way there. There will be other things to track. Yeah, there's a course but, of process behind that. Yeah. I was going to throw in as well, one other thing is that how heavy you carry your goals. Mm. Are they a weight? Are they a burden? So I think organizations often layer up the goals so they're just, just bearable. Or maybe even a bit more than I really believe I can get to. Mm. But um, a stretch, strain, a strain, strain. Mm. Simple, solid, solid. Stretch. stretch, strain. I think a lot of people have strain goals. So when they start out, they don't believe they can make it. Like I'm running a marathon. Yeah. And what happens then is, what happens if you start out something knowing that you really can't make it? No motivation, is there? Yeah, you can't do that. It's easy to give up. So need to. What happens if the goal is too easy? Also might give up because. What's the probably start reward for completing it? Don't need to hurry up. Just, no. But what if it's either a, a very solid goal or a stretch goal? Those ones are achievable, aren't they? They're, the solid is very achievable. Yeah. The stretch is going to be outside of our comfort zone, potentially, or on the edge of our comfort zone. Yeah. So our, our persistence at achieving goals increases when we have a range goal mm. and that is between solid and stretch. Right. Um, but I think many organizations actually layer it up so it's a bit too heavy and make it uncomfortable. And I, again, coming back to a performance environment, you actually see this a lot in high performance sports, especially cycling, is people carry the weight of what they're expected to achieve too heavily and it actually decreases their performance. 
So that if I said to you, you see this in football, end of the season, the weight of trying to achieve relegate, uh, not be relegated is so heavy that they can't actually play football. So I think that the good leaders and good um, uh, employees, workers, it's, it's also working out how to carry your goal with ease so that even if it's challenging, you can come in and say, no, I'm going I'm to go after this. Mm. And that kind of positivity is, is important. You can look at a lot of technology teams we work with. They've got very, very heavy development cycles for their tech that they're building. <sighs> you know? They know they're going to do a lot of late nights to put that together mm. and it's going to mm. be very lengthy and they're mm. almost braced for failure from the start. Mm. How often should we be setting goals or resetting goals? Is it an annual thing? Is it a monthly thing? Or can we really say how often we should be setting goals? I have no, on that one, I have no idea. I know someone who has one of my family members planned out their life by decade. Wow. I know you've booked your retirement. <laughs> Just, Chris yeah. has booked his retirement party. Yeah, 2058. It's uh, 6th of March, 2058. 6th of March. I call it quits. And uh, we're having a party on the weekend, so you're I'll, invited. I'll be there. I'm going to yeah. be 78. Probably the 8th of, 8th of March, 2058. 78. It's, there's nothing in my diary at the moment for that, but I'll be 78. No, I'll put, I'll put that in. I'll put that in. So you're, you've got... But I know someone who planned out their life by decade. Right. And they've got goals for each decade. And I like then, that. You got that? Yeah, I like <laughs> oh, that. No. Oh, no. I mean, loosely I held. never have started this. Loosely held. They're not that loosely held, though. Are they not? No. It's like, this is what I want to achieve in my life. That's quite intense, isn't it? It's really intense, yeah. And, and feels like you've lost some of the agency, maybe. I mean, what if you change your mind? They, they change their mind a bit, but, but, yeah, but. Some, but some people, that's the level that they're at. Mm. Uh, big, big picture thinking, mm. big life goals. I'm sure they, that I know that person's going to achieve nearly all those things. Mm. Others are like, I need my goals every day. I'm somewhere in the middle, I think. Mm. And also, I'm motivated by the ambiguity and the unknown mm. and exploring. Mm. So I don't, want, I don't want to be on too much of a railroad. If I did, this company would be a lot bigger. <laughs> if, but I want the uh, flexibility to say, actually, do you know what? This year we take a diversion or let's try this. Mm. So I want enough spare capacity. I said, Honestly, I couldn't be asked to be an Olympian. I, c I couldn't be bothered. You cannot do it? Nah. You want to? <sighs> it's so narrow focus. Mm. What do you think you do every morning when you wake up as an Olympian? Got to eat the right thing. If you weigh yourself. Can't have cereal. You look at your watch and think, what time is it? Did I have enough sleep? Mm. Weigh yourself. You can have eggs, but you can't fry them. Yeah, but, but I, I, just, I just I haven't got the single focus like that. I, I can't do that. Mm. Can, I cannot do that. So, you know, so I think you've got to think about who you are as a person and the way you self-knowledge. You've got the way you work. Mm. And we're, we're, there's 8 billion people on this world and they're all completely unique, mm. every one of them. Mm. How can you get to know yourself, work out how you work? And what works for you in terms of goals? Mm. I also there's a lot of people that don't have enough goals, and then they sometimes feel lost. Yeah, they feel. I find that quite frustrating. I find that quite <sighs> annoying. Even mm. just I, you see friends or you speak to people who have clearly have ambitions or are ambitious, would love to whatever it is. Maybe it's a sporting goal. Maybe it's a, a weight loss or a weight gain goal, and they're scrambling around. They've got that ambition, but they haven't clarified it into something that's inspiring, something that's measurable. And there's a lot that's of partly health. why I do this job. I love yeah, to help yeah. people with that. I think it's very good for your mental health. In fact, mm. in this excellent book, The A to Z of Human Performance, written by an Olympian. Uh, Emma Wicks. Awkward. Uh, and a former Special Forces soldier, now expert in high-performance jobs, Steve Eaton, MBE. Also, Emma's an, Emma's an MBE as well. And then what about you? John Sercom. But if look how the end of my name spelt, M B E. Yeah. So I've got they both got a real that's, one, and I've got fakey. That's clever. Yeah. Um, but Steve wrote a great chapter on on goal setting, and and goals in this book, and I won't read it out loud. But um, what is uh, interesting there is stress stops you from being effective. So the cortisol it, it affects your memory, perception, coordination, and I do feel that. So there's almost like a a self-reinforcing truth. If you don't have enough goals and you become stressed or you become depressed or, you know, unhappy, mm. then your physiology doesn't make you want to set goals or help you achieve them. And then... It's a vicious cycle. It's there. a vicious cycle, yeah. And I, so I, I've got a lot of sympathy for people who don't have a direction or a motivation or a purpose mm. and also maybe haven't got the help to set goals. And also, 
a lot of people set goals and don't attain them. I know someone who sets incredibly ambitious goals and spent a lot of their life continually disappointed that they're not as successful as they thought mm. it would be. So it's also, are you setting the right type of goals? Is it healthy for you? Is it in a good direction? Mm. Um, but you need a community around you to help that. And you need a team. I think that's where organizations do provide that. They have formal goal setting processes and managers and there's an HR department, learning and development to help you grow. You know, there's a lot of yeah. things that, that come through work. And mm. I think that's why work is very healthy for human beings. Yeah, and I think it's healthy as well to have life goals. That might help. What's your life goals, Chris? Oh, what's my life goals? Big question. I mean, we're into the phase now where we've we've had Olivia, we've had one baby, and we're thinking about house moves, further babies, life stuff, life stuff, hey, families. I think it's health. I think it's healthy to have those kind of goals, and and again, maybe loosely held, but I don't think it's too forced or professional to have targets or ambitions and, and goals that you you want to achieve in the year within your family you're so british imagine if we we're in america right now what would you what would they, they be have, saying they've got their goals they've got their goals and they've yeah, got it yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, the american man. dream yeah i want to live the american dream not everybody but mm, yeah mm. it's this, our, our, our culture in britain is quite humble and a little bit um backwards i guess isn't it to, mm. we feel it's wrong to put out our ambitions mm. i love it when i work in america and i go and meet people and say i run my own company how can I help you succeed? <laughs> they're just, they're, yeah. let's, let me, I know a person, you know, they're yeah, quite yeah. Uh, motivated in pushing things forward. High recommendation but culture as well. Apparently Europe, we've, we've lived so close to each other for so long mm. that we don't want to overstep. So mm. European culture is perhaps a bit less mm. like that. How, what are we doing in the space of helping teams, uh, organizations, leaders, individuals set goals as a company? Um, well, we run a lot of goal attaining workshops. One of the ones that we run a lot of is a team day mm. where you think through what the macro goals of your organization are, your team, break that down, think about how the process to achieve them, think about the milestones. And our breakthrough was realizing that those days shouldn't just be a one-off, but to work in a process with those organizations, set up a process over the course of a year, go back, see how they're getting on, make the adjustments, so we work with a lot of organizations and leaders and teams, helping them to achieve those goals. I also think that on the, a lot of the leadership and sales workshops that we run, that's this question that we start with, which is what do you want to achieve? And how can we help you get there? But also how can you help yourself? Let's use all the, I mean, we've got a whole book. Mm. You can just go on the internet and Google it as well. I mean, there's, there's the research and evidence for how to be goal-based is massive. But that's not enough, actually. You need a person. You need someone to help you. And you, know, you don't need someone. It, when someone who knows what they're doing helps you, mm. takes an interest and says, tell me about your goals. Let me help you work out what you want. Help There's shape a, them. Yeah, sh uh, it could be finding the direction. So, mm. you know, there's, uh, some people have got very great goals, but they haven't really got any direction and they keep yeah. wondering, should I go? Their process maybe isn't right. Yeah. But, you know, can I, can I set you up in the right direction and... I'm working with leaders every day in big global companies on those kind of things. Mm. And I mean, I also like, really like it in sales. How, how can you achieve your target? How can you achieve your revenue target? Um, but it, in sales, there's a process and there's skills mm. and there's motivation. And if you mm. put the three together, what do you get? You hit your goals. You hit your goals. And, achieve. Um, and also, hopefully, and this is one of the quantitative goals that I have. Can you hit your goals and go home at 5.30? Mm. Because we can all work longer. Yeah. But can you do it within a disciplined mm. amount of time? Mm. And can you achieve your goals before you need to hit them? Can An it, early target. Always achieve them early. Mm. Again, coming back to that feeling of agency, can mm. you hit them early? If you mm. can hit them early rather than just at the deadline or just after. The feeling. Yeah. But having said that, uh, I'll just look to the time now. We're going to wrap up our podcast. It's nearly 5.30. I don't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if we ended up working really late to do a good podcast... Wouldn't feel as good, would it? No, we've got no, to go no. home. So we're going to go home. Well, Jonna, thank you. It's been an absolute delight on this episode. What a day. It's been great. Goal! Goal, 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 goal. The South Americans, they know how to celebrate. Oh, they goal. really do. They really do. Ring that bell. I'm looking forward to the South American dubbing of this episode. <laughs> no, uh, I can speak a little bit of Spanish, but we will get in the professionals for that. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you very much for joining us for this episode. See you next time. Thank you, Jonna. Thank you, Christoph. Thanks for watching this video by Interactive Workshops. 
give it a like down below and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video. Click through to here or here to watch another video by Interactive Workshops.